Bubs, we're live. We're live, Bubs. Come on, Bubs. <laughs> I ain't going to reach you. <laughs> hey, good morning. 5 a.m. Master Scrum Show. Hope you're doing well. I'm Greg Master, Scrum Master and Agile Coach. And we, we're up early. Got there walking around. You join the lights. I have to put a TikTok up with the Christmas lights out there in the park. It's pretty cool. I think I'm going to change my virtual background for my Zoom calls and everything to the Christmas lights. Why not? You know? Because, yeah, to be honest with you, it's kind of happy thoughts and beautiful to see the lights all on in the park in the morning at 5 a.m. in the morning when there's nobody else there and you relax and enjoy them. So what we're going to talk about today, I'm talking about um, meeting failure, meet, meeting fail. I got to cut my hair. I got to like, like one of the little tabs up here on the top of my head. Anyway, um, when people transition from waterfall to agile in a and Scrum, the the amount of meeting failures is amazing. And it's amazing how Waterfall lets you have these long meetings that you don't need. And you got to rethink of stuff. And how dashboards might help with that too. So we're going to talk a couple of things about meetings, meeting failures. Just spending way too much time in a meeting. Because I'll be honest, I come from the Gary V world of meetings where I don't like spending time in the meetings. And I just want to focus on the topic at hand and what we need to fix as we get together and move on. So that is 5 a.m. Master Scrum Show. I am Greg Master Scrum Master as your coach. I hope you're doing well. I didn't do a show yesterday because a lot of meetings happened, took over the day and just didn't make it. So it's just one of those things. And um, we talk about Scrum and that. Agile in a practical, tactical way, so you can bring value to your customer, not spend all day in meetings, not work crazy hours because you're spending most of your time in meetings all day, and then we're actually productive and get going so we can go home to family and friends and have some fun and enjoy the day. All kinds of emails. Anyway, so why am I bringing this up? Just the other day, just had this thing where they're trying to build this cadence of meetings and they're like, oh, let's do a two-hour meeting. Oh, let's do a three-hour meeting. I'm like, why do you want to do a two-hour meeting, a three-hour meeting, please? Do not associate me with a two- or three-hour meeting. You know, I'm like, oh, my God. So um, try to instill some things to make these things go better and quicker, faster, so we're not all day standing there or talking or listening, or sleeping, or doing other things, multitasking during these two, three-hour meetings. So, so the meeting failure is the idea of that we need these two-hour-plus meetings to do stuff, to show what we're doing, to do some work. And I'm like, well, not really. So, so here's the thing. When you have these meetings with the managers, they want to know what they can do to help, what they can do to fix. Do they need to, Jerry, are you growling at the cat? Jerry's growling at the cat. Here's Jerry. There, this one, the grumpy one. I'm going to hold you up here and make you stay up here on the show all day. He's sitting there growling. All I need them to do is chase after the cat and knock all the lights down. So when a couple things that I noticed that, that, that just cause these problems for these meetings to go failure, I'm just going to name a couple. One, they're not in cycle with the scrum meetings or the scrum cadence. People are like, oh, let's do a weekly um, outbrief on what's going on. Why? The end of the sprint, which is a two-week sprint, if you're smart or less, you'll have all the information you need. So why create an extra meeting? So that's the one one of the things that just meeting failure when they transition from, from waterfall to agile. There's no need to. And if you really want to know what's going on, go attend the daily scrum. And, and that would be another story. we got to talk about that. I think I talked about the 15-minute, hour-long daily scrums that drive me nuts. And it really should just be a 15-minute meeting encounter. We've talked about that before. So that's one thing. Let's They're like, let's have a brief on a, an odd time that's not the completion. But there's no updates. There's nothing really to update. So why create the meeting to have it when it makes absolutely no sense? So that's number one. That's meeting failure one, number one. Meeting that failure number two is these, these two-hour outbreak meetings that they want to do on a monthly basis, quarterly basis, whatever it would be. And I'm like, oh, we need this to talk about everything. Well, no, you don't really. If your dashboards are set up correctly, and this is where dashboards come in handy, the manager can look at the stupid dashboard before the meeting. It's like, 
It's like the idea of reading PowerPoints. They teach you all the time. Do not read from the PowerPoint. Anybody can read from the PowerPoint. Just highlight a couple points that you want to talk. What I say, the subjective part of what you want to say. I like to create dashboards to give the information about how the team's doing. The person who's speaking can add their subjective interpretation, things they need help with. That doesn't take more than five minutes to be done. And if you have that many more problems, then you know what? You need to pull it off and say, we really need to talk about this another time because you don't want to sabotage all these things going on. Because I like to leave room for people showing off with the work they did, like actually doing stuff, not reading off a list of stuff. Don't need to do that. It's already in the system. We all know about it. It's great. It's awesome. Um, don't need a resume list. If that's your company, then you get problems with your company. I know everybody wants to show up. The, sh the show proof and pudding is people using your software and, and liking it. And they'll let you know. They don't like it. They'll let you know, too. So the second one is these long meetings where they can use dashboards to show how the progress on something. And then you could just say five minutes of sub a subjective interpretation. How you doing? You don't need 20 minutes per team to talk about what you're doing. And these, these are all waterfall things. And the reason why I say the waterfall things, and here's why. In the waterfall world, you have all this time to deliver stuff to your customers. So you know what? They fill the time up with meetings. It's what they do. I'm just being honest. It's what they do. And when you transition a lot of times from waterfall to a agile environment, they pull that, that thought process. Well, well, we need a status brief. We need to. No, you don't. Because every sprint is technically a status brief. Every sprint closed when you get all your, your work logged in in the system. And you know when you delivered some stuff. That is your status brief. There's no need to because it's already updated. And you know what works on what's not done, right? And, and that's all you need. And this is the transition problem. So there's two of them. As I said, the idea that you need to have a meeting not in cadence with your scrum meetings is, is, is wrong. Don't do it. Um, I mean, you can have internal team meeting, but there's no reason to reflect external to outside the team on, on a, and in, in the middle of a sprint. There's no reason they shouldn't do it. It's a waste of time. It's a waste of energy. I still fight that battle every day of my life. And then the other one is taking all this time to do a, a status brief or a debrief what the project is, your dashboard should show how the team is doing for whatever project you're doing. And then you just spend five minutes on subjective. So if you have, if you, let's say we do, we got 10 teams. If you did five minutes a team, that's 60 minutes, right? 50 minutes or something like that. It's under an hour. It should be done. And then you can talk about stuff and you can let them sh show something you did in that five minutes. It really could be done. And these, these people are like, oh, we need hours and hours and hours. I'm like, no, you don't. Um, we don't need a status brief on how you did. It's not necessary. When you do the dashboards, the managers, and this is where you train them, they can go on those dashboards anytime they want. They don't need a status brief. They may need more information dashboard, and that's the iterative process. As they use them, they figure out the other questions they want, and they should let you know. So that's what I want to show, but talk about today. Just meeting failure, just experiences I have lately, just transitioning where people just want to stick to the old ways of waterfall. I'm like, stop it. We don't need to waste our time on that stuff. Eh, it's part of the job, but you know what? Every time I win, it's a little win. I did that. So, uh, Patricia Benson's in there. Far tech. I don't know. Anyway, so I want to wish you all good. Have a great day. Oh, don't forget. On the 20th of December at noon, I'm going to be talking about OKRs, another area where the waterfall people mess this stuff up. But, but I really believe OKRs are really helpful for sprint planning, for Scrum. They'll be focused. If done right. If done wrong, they're terrible. I'll tell you that right now. So hopefully you see you there on the 20th. And I wish you all the best and happy scrumming and enjoy. Go go take some pictures of the seasons and put them on the back of your Zoom calls or your 
your Cisco calls or whatever calls you do for your virtual meetups. With that, I say goodbye and have a great day. See you.